Welcome to Unfold Data Science friends. My name is Aman and I am a data scientist. In this particular video, I am going to cover what are the assumptions of basic linear regression model. So why this topic all of a sudden? The reason is guys, in many of the interview I have seen, interviewer asking this question and then people are not able to answer this simple question, especially the freshers, okay? Freshers means somebody who is new to data science. When you come to data science guys, these are the topics that you should have very strong hold on, okay? If you are not able to answer these topics, then interviewer might think that you are just doing things on the surface. You don't know anything beyond that, okay? So let us understand what are the assumptions when you run a basic linear regression model, okay? So there are four or five assumptions guys that you have to keep in your mind. Every time you are being asked that in the interview, just stick to these four or five assumptions, okay? The very first assumption of a linear regression model is the linear relationship between target variable and independent variables, right? So for example, if this is my data, right? This is my data, this is my target variable y, okay? And this is my x1, x2, etc. So what should happen is there should be a linear relation between y and x1 at the same time y and x2. That is where we will be able to fit a line, right? So the very first assumption is linear relation. So this question can be asked to you in other way as well. So sometimes people might ask you, what are the prerequisites that you see in the data and then you decide you should go for a linear model or your data should satisfy some of the criteria for fitting a linear model. What are those criteria? So these are the answers for that. There has to be a linear relation between target and predictors, number one. Number two is very low, very low or no multicollinearity, okay? So what is multicollinearity guys? Multicollinearity is a phenomenon where your independent variables are collinear to each other. For example, in this scenario, let us say x1 and x2 have very high degree of correlation. Now that is a problem for linear regression model. Why that is a problem? This interviewer might ask you this question. Why that is a problem? The problem is because the way we want to measure the relation between x1 and y is we want to keep x2 constant, okay? That is how you define this, right? So you say y is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 and so on and so forth. How do you define this beta 0, beta 1, beta 2? You say for every unit shift in x1, what is the relative shift in y keeping all other variable constant? So essentially when your variables are correlated, then when you change one variable, the other variable cannot be kept constant, which means internally it will also change to a degree, okay? And that is where your coefficients will get inflated, okay? And due to this reason, multicollinearity should not be there in the data or it should be very minimal. This is assumption number two. Assumption number three is close to errors, errors of your regression model. What are the errors, guys? The difference between your actual values and predicted values, okay? So nothing but E1, E2, E3, E4, okay? E1, E2, E3, EN, these are your errors. So this assumption is about those errors. So what it says is, there should not be heteroscedasticity in the data, okay? So what is this phenomena, guys? Heteroscedasticity. This phenomena is like, your errors should show a random behavior for all your axes, okay? What I mean to say here is, your error terms, E1 is for one observation, E2 is for other observation, E3 is for third observation. So your errors should not show any kind of relation with X1, X2, X3, okay? So it should not be a function of X1, X2, X3. What is typically a heteroscedastic data is, if you plot errors versus your residuals, right? So let us say these are your errors and these are your uh, predicted values, errors versus predicted, okay? If you plot a chart like this, right? Your error should be random for all your predicted values, which means error should be like this, okay? 
if there is a relation coming between your errors and prediction for example something like this a funnel kind of shape this is not a good thing to happen okay it should not happen in your data this phenomena is called heteroscedasticity so error should be random for all your predicted values that is the assumption number 3 assumption number 4 is there should not be any auto correlation between the errors no auto correlation auto correlation means correlation with each other okay no auto correlation of error terms okay which means that e1 should not be correlated with e2 e2 should not be correlated with e3 and so on and so forth okay so errors should not be related to each other why that should happen the reason is if your errors are able to explain each other that means that your regression model is not capturing the underlying pattern of the data okay so if if you have fit a regression model you should also check for this okay fifth one you can take for the error that your errors should be normally distributed okay so normal distribution of errors fifth one normal distribution of errors this is the five main assumptions of linear regression there is another assumption that you should be aware of that is nothing but all the observations are independent of each other okay so this this assumption is also uh, you know uh, good for other models as well but in linear regression also you can say all your observations should be independent of each other all observations are independent so these are the five or six main assumptions of a linear regression guys that you should talk when somebody asks you what are the assumption of basic linear regression model so three of the assumptions are around errors only error should be normally distributed should not be heteroscedasticity phenomena and this is no auto correlation between the errors no multi collinearity and then linear relation between your target and predictors this one is kind of not so important all your observation should be different i mean uh, not related to each other independent of each other okay these are the uh, assumptions that you have to explain guys people might ask you how will we how you will you check these things for checking these things once you fit linear regression model then there are many plots this plot you will get as an output this plot you will get as uh, this you can check as a normality of error you can check using something known as qq plot okay and there are many plots using which you can check these phenomena these two things you can check using basic scatter plot itself right so this is all about this video guys let me know what part you did not understand or you want me to explain more i'll see you all in the next video guys till then wherever you are stay safe and take care